Hi. Um, Thank you. Hi. So, um, so my name is Frances Hopson, and I work for Burns McDonnell in the transmission and distribution practice at the UK headquarters in the Birmingham office. In the transmission and distribution practice, we work to solve complex issues associated with aging infrastructure and grid modernisation, along with our mission to make our clients successful. So, a bit of background about me. I studied manufacturing and mechanical engineering at the University of Warwick, which is a three-year course where the first two years were general engineering and the last year specialised in manufacturing and mechanical. The work experience I've gained includes Our Ingenious World, which was a week-long work experience that I undertook whilst I was applying to jobs after graduating. I listened to some talks from some really inspiring engineers about their careers, projects they've worked on and how they got into engineering as well as working on a group project to put into practice the knowledge we had gained from the talks throughout the week. During high school, I also undertook a week of work experience at Nissan Technical Centre Europe, where I experienced different parts of their operations, including engineering, CAD, testing, quality management. Um, my current role is a transmission engineer at Burns and McDonnell, where I'm currently training to produce high voltage underground cable design packages that meet client and national standards. So I'm going to talk a bit about my recruitment journey, some of the challenges that I've faced along the way and share some tips that I've learned throughout the process. So I started applying to jobs a few months prior to graduating in July, 2019. As I focused on my last year on my dissertation and exams, um, I started applying to jobs late and that meant many of the jobs I was applying to would start the following September, which meant it would likely take me at least a year to find a job. So after applying to job applications, my first assessment centre was in November at Mercedes AMG for a manufacturing position. The assessment centre is the final stage of recruitment for most companies where applicants will often visit the company to have an interview and group activities with other ap applicants. My second assessment centre was in December at Virgin Media for an innovations position and my third assessment centre was in February at WSP for a general engineering role. As shown by the varied roles at the different assessment centres, I still wasn't certain on a specific career path, so I just applied to roles that I thought were interesting to me and thought I could bring something to. Throughout the rest of the year, I carried on, on applying to jobs, attending interviews and assessment centres, but towards the end of the recruitment year, I still didn't have a job offer and I'd heard back from companies where I'd made it to the final stages of recruitment that the positions had been postponed or cancelled due to the impacts caused by the coronavirus pandemic. This was the tough point in my recruitment journey as I felt like I was back at the same position I was a year ago, and but I just carried on applying to jobs and being proactive with my job search. Then in July 2020, I applied to Burns and McDonnell and secured an interview. This is where my hard work paid off and I was offered a job, which I started in September 2020. So one of the challenges during my recruitment journey was that I had little work experience and it was one of the areas that was lacking on my CV. I found gaining work experience just as hard and challenging as applying to jobs. So I gained experience in other ways, such as site visits, events and webinars that still showed I was being proactive. I would also say that gaining work experience doesn't have to be in the industry that you wish to pursue a career in. For example, I worked for my dad's company whilst I was applying to jobs and it helped me learn skills such as communication and report writing that recruiters still look for. Another challenge I faced was gaining interview experience as I'd never experienced an interview interview before graduating and it's something that can only really be gained by going to interviews. I found that throughout my recruitment journey I was continually building up my experience and although I started off feeling like my interviews didn't go very well I made sure I never made the same mistakes again and always tried to improve. Um, another challenge was that whilst I was applying to jobs, I found that searching for specific terms on recruitment websites narrowed job searches as a lot of companies use different job titles for the same role. The coronavirus pandemic also had an impact on the availability of jobs, which increased the competition in an already competitive industry. This can be challenged to anyone applying to jobs right now and will likely mean it will take longer to find a job, but my advice to this would be continue to be proactive and persevere. 
So some tips I've learned through um, finding jobs. My first tip would be to use a range of recruitment websites. This is because there will be a lot of competition on the main recruitment websites and some companies may not recruit on different websites, so you could miss opportunities. Um, so for example, some websites I used were LinkedIn, Gradcracker and Indeed. I also used to look through institution and organisational member lists to find companies and then I'd go on their websites to find jobs. Another tip would be to attend events, conferences and webinars because although these aren't direct ways to apply for jobs, they're a good way to find out more about the company and the different roles available. They're also a good way to find job roles in industries that you haven't previously considered. Networking would be my next tip because like the previous one, it isn't a direct way to find a job, but it is a good way to reach out to people already working in the industry and get advice on job applications. You also might connect with someone who knows about job opportunities and can help develop your career. Um, I would also recommend researching different companies you would like to work for to find out about their different roles. Um, as I found during my job research that different companies will sometimes use different titles for very similar roles. Um, without this extra research to find out the job descriptions, opportunities could be missed just because the job title is different to what you may expect. Um, I would also recommend keeping networking platforms such as LinkedIn updated to ensure you're not um, overlooked by recruiters due to experience that may be missing from your profile. The platform or algorithms will also display the most relevant job suggestions if you keep your profile up to date. Um, some tips on the application process that I've learned is research the company's recruiting timescales. Um, this is because many companies start recruiting a year in advance because of the length of the recruiting process. And I found this out when I was applying to jobs and ended up applying to ones that would start the following year. Um, another tip would be to make every application specific, especially with the increased competition for jobs right now. One of the things I did to ensure that my applications were specific was including a paragraph in every cover letter about why I would like to work for the company and some of the projects that I found interesting. I also used to check over my CV and ensure the most relevant information was emphasised and relevant to the role. Um, so another, I found a big part of the application process was making my application stand out from others and ensuring that everything was included on the application. Um, for example, cover letters, CVs and questions may be separated for different recruiters to check. So I'd include as much information on each of these sections and wouldn't worry too much about repeating the information. Another tip for applications is a well-presented CV and a covering letter that's easy for a recruiter to um, read and pick out the key information quickly. For example, on my CV, I would put words or phrases such as my achievements or companies that I'd done work experience for in bold or a slightly different colour just to pick them out. Um, so some tips as well for that I've learnt from assessment centres and interviews. Um, I would say prepare well and research the company, especially if it's one of your first interviews, as it helps to be more confident and have better conversations in the interview. Um, researching the company on social media channels was also a good tip and useful for me, as they can be more up to date than their company websites. Also, find areas of the, of the company where your interests lie, and I found this as a useful talking point in interviews, especially if I was asked why I would like to work for the company. I'd already have an example of why I was interested. Um, it'll also help you make you stand out from other candidates who may just know an overall background about the company. Another tip I learnt from interviews was, was to prepare questions for the interviewers um, to find out more about the company, what the role would entail and what it's really like to work for the company as they'll often give you a better answer than you, anything you could find online. I also learnt to prepare answers to common interview questions such as strengths and weaknesses or situational awareness questions. This helped me to be more confident in interviews as, and have these key answers ready. Um, my final tip would be to ask for feedback after every interview and assessment centre to help keep improving your interview technique and understand where are the key areas to focus on for next time. So Throughout the process, I also learned some essential personal skills, such as being proactive, staying motivated and persevering, especially as it took me a year to find a job. 
and just keep going and learning from my experiences. Thank you. So Elizabeth hasn't said anything, so I guess I'll stop. Ooh, not at the end, hopefully at the beginning. Let's try this again. Hmm. Here we go. Can everyone hear me, by the way? I'm just checking. No one's... Okay, uh, so my name is Arta Pachoko. I am a, currently a trainee test engineer for GKN at a research and design centre. It's We're working on electric motors at the moment. And I'm just going to be talking again about sourcing work experience and placement opportunities. And I had a slightly different route than Francis. So starting from my sixth form and when I was doing my A-levels, I'd wanted to do architecture for a, a very long time at that point since I was 13 which very long time for a teenager uh, I studied maths further maths and physics and I also did art in that time I tried to do as much work experience and volunteering with echo architecture British land David Miller open city amongst a host of others however just before applying to UCAS I changed my mind and I really wanted to do mechanical engineering because I started studying mechanics and I understood it. So changing my, uh, changing my application meant all my experience that I had before wasn't as relevant. So I had to focus on the skills I'd learned and how they could be transferred into engineering. And I had another issue. I didn't want to drop art and I didn't want to be create, uh, lose the creativity. So I spent some time looking for inspiration and it was when I was at the cinema and I was watching this movie, uh, Mad Max, Fury Road, and I realised that they need engineers in film. And I had to look around and I noticed they needed them in theatre, live shows and amusement parks, amongst a host of other things. So I finished my A-levels and I started my first year at uni studying mechanical engineering at Queen Mary. There was a lot of theory and whilst I enjoyed most subjects, I really loved the design module. And that's me in first year doing some design. So I spoke to my neighbor who worked as a producer about going into film. And um, producing and special effects are two very different areas, but he said, if I got a CV, he might be able to sort something out. So using all my experience in architecture, I created a CV for a week's work experience in 2016 as a prop maker. The first week I was unpaid and I saw it as an opportunity to learn as many skills as possible. And some of the skills I learned during that time were things like finishing techniques, spray painting, fiberglass, carpentry, metalworking, and casting. And it also led to a job for the rest of my summer. In second year, I continued cultivating my interests and studying, but also improving my skill sets. And one of the things I did was one day a week, I continued doing my job as a prop maker. And I said to them, if there was no work for me, I would come in and I'd learn from someone else who was working just to improve those skill sets. In my third year, I had my bachelor's project and it started with many avenues and it ultimately led to animatronics as I tried to combine my prop making skills with engineering. The initial idea was to create modular animatronics as it would allow designers to focus more time on bespoke features. So focusing on things like eyes, tails and hands. Uh, the unification of my ideas uh, gave me a clear direction for the project. This was consolidated by speaking to a pioneer in animatronics. I'd been hearing his name come up often when talking to colleagues and I did a quick Google to see his work and at the end of the portfolio was his email. So I contacted him for an interview to further my research. The next stage was refining my creation. Again, this was done with regular feedback from my tutor, as well as people in the industry who I had contacted regarding the project.
At the, other, at the end of the project, I had a successful prototype and also I landed a job on Star Wars on a team with a developer I'd been speaking to since the first stage. So summer 2018, animatronic designer on Star Wars, it was intense and it had many challenges. Those are my aliens. Um, my mum calls them her ba my babies, so technically she's a grandma now, earlier than she'd hoped, I guess. Um, so it was intense, had many challenges, and I had a team of people uh, to lead as a monocle modular animatronics idea was applied to just under 100 creatures total. Spent as much time as possible talking and meeting to highly skilled people in the project in all scopes, as well as learning new skills while refining my old ones. And then it was my fourth year and I had to go back to uni and it was, I wasn't actually sure if I wanted to go back and leave work. But I had my master's project to finish and choosing the project I had another dilemma there was two things I could choose the first one was completely out of my depth uh, completely out of my depth apart from the fact I had to do mechanical design and the second was a project I could have feasibly done by myself which was an animatronic head essentially I chose a project I knew nothing about as university is a place where you won't get fired if the thing you make doesn't work it's all about the process. I use my experience to help lead the team, encouraging the people's strengths and allowing us to support each other's weaknesses. And we eventually ended up with a working prototype. At this point, after graduation, I went back to freelancing. I had some experience with this from prop making, namely invoicing, taxes, organizing project timing, and I ended up generating income in two ways. The first was, I worked on People Per Hour, which is a website, as a CAD designer. And this involved creating proposals and bidding for jobs. And this is a good site for supplementing income with small work from home projects, but they do take a percentage. And then I was also a special effects designer on the Mary Poppins Theatre Show and a design engineer for the Dubai Emirates Expo. And both these jobs involved calling up a number of companies, sharing my portfolios and CVs until I fought, found a a project and a company that was a good fit for me. However, I was getting tired of being a freelancer and I wanted something more stable, which doesn't really exist in the film industry. So I had to think, what did I want from my job? Foremostly, there was stability, learning about new things, applying my engineering skills, working with a mix of computer theory and making things, and problem solving because all the jobs I'd enjoyed up to then involved problem solving. So I considered the automotive industry and I ended up here at GKN doing test engineering and I wasn't completely sure what I would be doing when I started. I didn't know how to do much but I was willing to learn and everyone was willing to teach me. So I started seeking out small projects that I was comfortable doing with alone as well as ones that would increase my skill base. So so far, I've been installing and fixing high vol voltage electronics. I've been working on rig maintenance, computer systems and coding, and trying to share my knowledge with people who I work with. And I looked for what skills would be helpful long-term and focused on those. So here we are. And what I've learned in a nutshell is you have to know your worth. If you aren't getting paid or you're being barely paid, there are three things you can try and do. The first is try and set up room for negotiation. When I started on Star Wars, they, they offered me a very low rate. Uh, and that was when I'd considered how much prop making and how much experience I had in actual engineering. So I offered, I said I'd come in for a month and I'd want a negotiation. I want to negotiate my rate after that. And I actually got 25% more just from that conversation. The second is you can reject the offer politely. So here's an email for me, someone, after all this experience I'd gained, offered me 10 pounds an hour. And I said, no, thank you, this is why. And if you've got something that we fit better for, keep me in mind. And the third is, if you can afford it, take the opportunity to learn from professionals, asking what they are doing. And if it interests you, offer help. Because applying new skills with a sport of someone who really knows what they're doing is one of the best ways to learn and that's how I've learned most of my skills and part of that is be curious 
People want to share, so being inquisitive and listening can lead to interesting things that you may not even have considered. Don't fear rejection. The most difficult thing about freelance or job applications in general is rejection, but it's very difficult to advance without the risk. If it happens, try and ask why before continuing forward with the new knowledge. As Francis said, the feedback is so important because you don't want to find yourself in a rut making the same mistakes again and again. Uh, do reject imposter syndrome. So once you do have a job, you might be thinking, what am I doing there? I don't know much or they're just going to wait for me to do something wrong. As long as you are honest about your knowledge and experiences, you'll be fine. There's no shame in asking for help if you do not know something. Articulate, reflect and consider. All experiences, good or bad, are learning curves. And most important thing is to figure out why and what is causing that and being able to explain your thoughts surrounding situations clearly really helps. Uh, so the world is smaller than you think. The original idea of six degrees of separation is now less than four due to us being connected via social media, even in niche industries like animatronics. One of my personal encounters involved meeting a girl on a random train that neither of us had done that journey before and we spoke by chance because I liked her earrings. We then found out that we would be working on the same project in just a week's time. And because the world is smaller than you think, you must take pride in whatever you do. If your name is going out there, you need to stand by it and you need to make sure that you're proud of it, really. And then I guess this is from both me and Francis. Do you guys have any questions? So, here we go. I think these are both for Frances, if she wants to join us again. Hi, Hi. Um, I'm just looking for the Q and A. Do you want me to read them out? We found them. Yeah, please. Oh, are they unpublished? Yeah. Okay. Um, do I regret beginning my applications in April? Would I recommend applying sooner for those graduating in summer? Um, that's a good question. I don't think I've ever regretted applying to applications in April, but I think it was probably a shock to me when I did start applying to jobs that I wasn't going to be starting the job until a year after. Um, I think as long as you're aware of the recruitment deadlines, and that within that year, whilst you're applying to jobs, you're actually gaining more experience and continuing your own improvement, then employers can see that you you want you want to what learn and your willingness. Um, so I don't think I would regret it because I spent that year building upon my experiences and um, yeah, improving. The next question also, did you ask for feedback at the end of interviews or after you got response about your application? Um, I didn't normally ask for feedback at the end of an interview. It would be normally when they, at the end of an assessment centre, you wait until they email you back with the response about whether you've got the job or not. It was during that conversation that I would ask for feedback, really. Um what made me choose engineering over architecture so one of the things that i noticed when i was doing all these things with architecture firms was just how many architects there were on a project it seemed like the market was really saturated and that's one of the things that made me consider engineering because of how many how multifaceted it is and how many options you have for something uh, for possibly new projects So Kay Cody has asked an interesting question. Have you found there is more equal number of male and female applicants in the assessment centres now? Uh, I don't know about assessment centres, but in the job place, it's about the same as it is at uni. I wouldn't say it's much different, but that doesn't mean we should lose hope. We should be pioneering and helping more women enter the industry. And that's I guess why both me and Francis are here really right now speaking to you all is because we want to encourage and I've I found my workplaces to be very open even though I am they're not discriminating the fact that I'm female they, they care about my opinion and they listen to my voice 
Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah, um, agree with that. A lot of places that are um, well, currently where I'm working, there is there's equal opportunities for both men and female applicants. Um, but yeah, a few of the assessment centres I've been to, I'd say it's the same ratio at university that I experienced really to do with um, male and female applicants. But um, in terms of employers, I've never experienced any discrimination between the two and I think all the opportunities have been offered are equal. Mm -hmm. uh, advice to first year students who want work experience or internships, spam people, don't feel bad, send them hello emails, introduce yourself, tell them why you're looking, what's good about you, you really have to sell yourself and you might have to send 50 emails, I, I know my emails full of no responses or no's but then there are some yeses and it's the yeses that you really need to pursue and I saw one about negotiating salary without seeming like you're being unreasonable it's quite difficult but you should look around you should consider your experience if you're less experienced you should be willing to take a slight pay cut but once you've got that experience it's very um useful to know the numbers that you're aiming for and bump them up a bit because they're always going to put, put you a bit lower if you're trying to go for 20 pounds you don't say 20 pounds you'll say 25 and they'll say oh that's way too high could you do this so you might want to be slightly out there but be willing to negotiate and don't be shy about it really because there's, there's no point hanging on to a minimum wage job when you've got all this experience and when you've got uh, an employ employer is running a business at the end of the day and they're not going to want to pay more especially if you so you've got you've got to kind of stand your ground on that um, and I think a little bit of networking break. Yep. Okay. Okie dokie. Thank you. And um, yeah, enjoyed presenting. It's okay. Um, You're on LinkedIn and stuff?